Bismillahirrahmanirrahim yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Irfan Nafal bin Omar, Presiden Malaysian Higher Education Institutions Quality Assurance Network, Makan. Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Aziza Abdullah, Assistant Vice Chancellor, Institute of Quality and Knowledge Investment, Ka, UITM. Yang berusaha Ms. Lo Xiao Yen, Director, Division of Quality Assurance, Uta. Our respected and distinguished speakers, yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Abdul Karim Alias, Director, Center for Development of Academic Excellence, CDAE, University of Science Malaysia. Yang berusaha Dr. Tengku Putri Norin Shah binti Tengku Shariman, our distinguished speaker. Deputy Director, Center for Lifelong Education and Learning Innovation, Multimedia University of Manu. Our respected moderator, yang berusaha Associate Professor Dr. Lihana Borhan, Director, Office of Knowledge and for Change and Advancement, International Islamic University of Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to Good Practice Sharing Webinar, Effective Micro Credential Management organized by ICANN. Thank you for being here with us this morning. To commence this event, I would like to call upon yang berbahagia, Professor Dr. Irfan Naufan bin Omar, President, Malaysian Higher Education Institutions Quality Assurance Network, MICAN, to give opening remarks. Please welcome. Bro. Uh, thank you, uh, our chairperson, Dr. Sharon Nizam Ahmad of UITM. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very clearly, Bro. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and good morning, everyone. Um, to our two distinguished panel members, Prof. Abdul Karim Malias of uh, University of Malaysia and Dr. Tengku Putri Norisah Tengku Shariman of Multibida University. Our moderator, Associate Professor Lehana Borhan of uh, IIUM. Our MICAN training unit headed by uh, Prof. Aziz Abdullah of UITM and Ms. Lo Xiaoyan of UTA. Our webinar secretariat, MICAN committee members, my kind members from the public and private universities, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Society for Malaysian Higher Education Institutions Quality Assurance Network, or my kind, I would like to thank you to everyone here for your support in our good practice sharing webinar series organized by our training unit. In addition to this training unit in my kind, we also have four other units, yeah? Self-Accrediting Universities Network, or SOS, South International Unit, Research Unit, and Publication Unit. Our training and benchmarking series organized by My Khan Training Unit and SEF Accrediting Universities Network and international networking activities through our international unit will not be fruitful without the support from all My Khan members from the public and private universities and college universities in Malaysia. This is our third webinar for this year. And we'll also have another virtual benchmarking ne next month. Today, the topic for our good practice sharing webinar will be on the effective management of micro credential. We are glad to have with us today one of the champions, if not the champion, of micro credential initiative, especially in the context of Malaysian higher learning, Prof. Abdul Karim Alias, my clip from USM. We also have Dr. Tengku Putinorisa of MMU, and as we know, MMU is one of the universities that are very actively offering many MC courses, especially their stackable credit bearing micro credentials. Ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is in line with my current mission as a quality assurance network amongst Malaysian higher education institutions in sharing good practices and strengthening our IQA while providing interface with regulators and stakeholders. Of late, as we know, there is an increasing demand for lifelong and life-wide learning. With the advancement of technology, micro credential offers such solution. However, concerns on how to manage the design, development, implementation, evaluation, and certification of the micro credentials need to be addressed by us. Therefore, hopefully, from today's webinar, we will learn how to manage MCs effectively in our institutions. I'm sure that we will learn a lot from Prof. Karim and Dr. Tengku Putri Norisa, who will share their practices of micro-credential management in their institutions. Inshallah, this session will help us to strengthen our QA in our own institutions. Again, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Have a fruitful webinar. Assalamualaikum. Thank you again. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Prof.
for the speech. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to request the kind operation to turn on your video for a short photography session. My colleague here, Zila, will help me to take a few slides of photos. We have about 150 participants here. Okay, Zila. Okay, uh, ready. First take. One, two, three. Okay, wait now. Okay, okay, another take uh, for the second page. Okay, one, two, three. We have six page. All right, uh, third page. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, uh, fourth page. Okay, ready? One, two, three. All right, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Zila. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll pass the session to our moderator, Associate Professor Dr. Liana Burhan. But before that, allow me to introduce her. Associate Professor Dr. Liana Burhan obtained her degree from Washington University in St. Louis, Master's and PhD from the University of Chicago. She was also a visiting fellow at University of Cambridge in 2016. Dr. Liana is a lecturer at um, Psychology Department, Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, and also a director of Office of Knowledge for Change and Advancement International Islamic University of Malaysia. Dr. Liana. All right. Thank you, Dr. Nizam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good morning. Salam sejahtera, everyone. Okay, I am very honored to be moderating and uh, this sharing session featuring two very extreme speakers here. Um, so let me introduce the first one. Okay, Professor Karim, even though he doesn't really need any introduction, if you, uh, if you are only, even if you are only venturing into my credential, he is the guru. So, you know, you cannot miss him, but... <laughs> But let me just share a little bit. Let me just say it's a little bit compared to what he has already accomplished. Okay, he is a professor of food technology at the School of Industrial Technology, USM, and is currently the director of the Center for Development of Academic Excellence in USM, um, which he has been teaching since 1994. And he was the recipient of the prestigious Anugrah Academic Negara in 2008 for teaching. He was also uh, recognized as the top 50 educators in Asia Pacific in 2015 by Terrapin Asia and also um, recognized as one of Malaysia's rising star 2015, actually as the Malaysia's rising star 2015 award. And 2016, 2017-2018 and the world's most influential scientific minds by Clarivet Analytics. At, but at the same time, he has been working very, very hard uh, on the online platform. And now on the micro credential, he is one of the master trainers for ACAP. He led the development of the Malaysia MOOC as the co-chairman of the National Technical Policy. He is a strong advocate of leveraging the internet as an alternative medium for learning and learners. And he has developed and maintained several teaching portals, websites, online courses. You know, once you listen to him, you can see his passion as a teacher, his aspiration to nurture and educate. And now I'm not saying this to body him, yeah, he's not my boss. Okay, but because <laughs> that is the way he is. So I hand this over. 
uh, to Prof Karim, who who will be talking on effective micro credential management. Over to you, Prof. Terima kasih, Dr. Lihana. Uh, I'm I'm by no means an expert in micro credentials, so I have to make this declaration right from the beginning. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan selamat pagi, selamat sejahtera to all fellow uh, colleagues, academics, and uh, anyone who are interested to uh, learn more about micro credential. Uh, yang berusaha, uh, Prof. Dr. Irfan, um, Dr. Syahrul, our, our MC this morning, and Dr. Lo, and uh, my fellow speaker, Dr. Tengku. Thank you very much to the organizer, Mike Khan, for having me uh, in this program this morning to share about effective management of my cookie dancial. Um, it's always a great pleasure for me to share this, this topic, which I have been uh, advocating on, on my cookie dancial specifically since at least since 2018 and before that, uh, I was advocating a MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses, and online education, online learning in general since many, many years, as long as I can remember since I joined USM. So uh, let me share the screen. Okay, uh, for my presentation this morning, I have this uh, PowerPoint slide. And I'm going to share the link for the, all the participants to download the last slide at the end of this presentation. So don't worry, you don't have to take any pictures. I'll be sharing uh, the whole set of the slides you can download. So this is the topic uh, given to me, effective management of micro credential. And I, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm not an expert by any measure, but uh, since I've been doing this and advocating this, uh, so I'll be sharing from a USM perspective. It may or may not be effective. It depends on how you look at it and how you adopt and adapt uh, in your own institution or your own uh, organization. So to start with, I think I'm not going to uh, define what is my credential. I think uh, you can find in, in my MQA document. And I think probably if you have attended any of uh, forum or webinars on micro credential, probably you, you've got some idea already what is micro credential. To me, what is most important is apart from the what is, is the, the why behind it. So to put it very simply, when, when we talk about micro credential, why are we embarking into micro credential and why? Um, some people say, including myself, um, we say that micro credential is a real game changer. It's a real game changer for education or higher education in particular, or in LND, learning and development in particular. It's a real game changer. And if you under, if you if you have read a book or uh, by Professor Clayton Christensen uh, from Harvard, he wrote a book on disruptive innovation. And if you understand the definition of disruptive innovation in the context of business, but disruptive innovation in the context of education, specifically higher education, I cannot think of many examples, a real disruptive innovation. And now with micro credential, I can say, this is the only example so far that fulfill the definition of disruptive innovation. So you can find out uh, later if you have not read the book. Uh, you can Google and understand about disruptive innovation in the context of business, in the context of education. And you probably will agree with me that micro credential is a game changer and is uh, one example of disruptive innovation in the context of higher education, in the context of learning and development, the context of training, talent development, professional development, lifelong learning, personal development. So um, 
To put it simply, my confidential to me is all about providing flexibility. We, we have been talking about flexible education, dynamic curriculum, but we do not have the instrument or the mechanism to realize the philosophy behind flexible education. Of course, we have ODL, open distance learning. To some extent, that provides some flexibility uh, for education. But now with my credential, we have more flexibility, accessibility, affordability, and more options now for everyone to have access to education. So um, SDG4 is all about quality education, it's all about inclusive education. How do we realize that aspiration in SDG4? How do we realize that aspiration in our blueprint? Shift number nine, globalized online learning. Shift number, uh, shift number, shift number three, is it? Shift number three or number eight? Shift number three, I think, uh, the nation of lifelong learners, lifelong learning. So to realize this, SDG4 and also our blueprint is about making access, accessibility. Uh, we talk about equity, equity. We talk about flexibility and micro-credential to me is the answer, okay? So that's to set the scene, uh, why we are talking about micro-credential and why uh, if you, <laughs> yes, if you, if you listen to me when I'm talking about this, you know, sometimes I get, I can get carried away because of just the enthusiasm uh, about talking about micro-credential because I feel this is the way forward. So in, in, uh, in short, what is micro-credential is basically uh, providing uh, flexible education, learning on demand, just in time, just in case, just enough, just for me, making it very personalized. And we are moving from time-based to competency-based. And we can now provide, uh, rather than a so-called macro-credential, like a four-year degree program, three-year diploma program, or I would call it long-form credential long form credential because it take a long time and it's a very basically fixed time, three years, four years, it's all or nothing. Uh, but we are moving away from that kind of time-based kind of education into something uh, which is more uh, flexible and long form kind of curriculum into a short form content or modules, we call it. We can offer in a modular program. So when we offer in a modular program, that provides the flexibility in how do we, you know, when, when there are changes in the outcome, in the changes in the content to keep up with the trend, we keep up with the new uh, development so we can easily uh, change. We can easily uh, put something new, update and, and so on. So modular concept is uh, the, the essential thing that provides that flexibility. So bite size using a micro learning concept to address the, the so-called short attention span of the modern learners nowadays. We are living in a world of distraction, full of distraction, especially online. So how do we uh, deliver content in, in, in a way that we can capture the attention within a short time span? And digital credential. So now moving from paper-based credential into digital-based credential, which means that uh, we can uh, use the technology like blockchain and so on for authentication. We can put in a lot of metadata. We can put a lot of information. We can put a lot of learning artifacts, everything we can cram into one small digital batch. That again will provide the, the competitive edge of micro-credential compared to the traditional. And the most powerful part of micro-credential is the fact that we can make it stackable. So this is where I think um, moving forward, we can now design our micro-credential to provide a kind of learning pathway. And therefore we can provide option. Those who want to get the full qualification, that's the first group. Those who want to just get a small uh, qualification in the form of uh, deep, uh, certificates, advanced certificate, diploma, or those who just want to take one module and 
to, to for upskilling uh, purposes to or to for personal development for lifelong learning purposes they are not even interested to take the the, the formal qualification or even to get a certificate on on anything just to learn something for the purpose of uh, personal development or upskilling and professional development so in a nutshell these are the features of micro credential and as i mentioned just now the most powerful the most powerful part of um, micro credential is the fact that it, it is stackable stack courses can be can uh, are transfer, transferable as you can see here for example transferable to uh, a formal qualification and that is where we can leverage the power of micro credential and to provide uh, many options to the learners. All right. <clears throat> and micro credential also pro will, will provide the opportunity to bridge the formal education to informal or non formal education. So, on the right here, on the right hand side here, this is actually the main target group for micro credential which basically the non-traditional learners okay so now when we talk about effective management of uh, micro credential we have to look at the whole ecosystem we have to start looking from uh, take the drone view uh, so to speak the top view or the the, the the big picture of the ecosystem of micro credential this diagram i took from uh, this document which you can download Designing and Implementing Micro-Credential, a Guide for Practitioners, provide, uh, published by Commonwealth of Learning. A very good document, and I would encourage uh, uh, you to download this document. But basically, what it uh, illustrates here is the whole ecosystem, micro-credential ecosystem. So micro-credential, as with more traditional education and training credentials, do not exist in isolation. It doesn't exist in vac vacuum. But form part of a larger ecosystem. It is therefore important to appreciate the interconnectedness of the various components of the ecosystem before embarking on any micro-credentialing initiative. I think it's very important to see this micro-credential uh, as uh, a collection of uh, different components. In, uh, in a simple way, we can see on, on the right-hand side here, on the left-hand side here, these are the product. These are basically the program. Or the micro credential program so in, inside this when we look at uh, the, the program itself uh, we have the taxonomy taxonomy here means actually the pathway how do we create a structure from say a big uh, program and break it up into small modular program and therefore we can provide a pathway and then options for learners those who want to take the full qualification uh, full uh, formal qualification or those who are who doesn't care about taking the formal qualification but they want to take let's say at a, at a different level uh, depending on what they want to get from the micro credential is it for just personal development professional development upskilling reskilling and so on so the taxonomy here just means the learning pathway the structure then we have the framework and the construct so basically these are about the program itself then we have the players who are actually involved. So I will elaborate more. I have uh, actually uh, the next few slides, you will see more here. But basically, we have the learners and earners, so called. We have the, the, the stakeholders like the industry, the employers, uh, the reviewers, those people who, who are involved in the, uh, assuring the quality, uh, the staff, the employees. These are the people who are actually involved uh, as part of the development process quality quality control and so on then we have other other um, other parties yeah? for example uh, we have administrative and business system we have quality system and processes we have the governance part um, that will determine the direction or the objective of the program and we have the issuance uh, the issuance uh, those who actually would issue the qualification or the digital badge and so on and in the middle here is the customer experience. So when we talk about managing the looking at the whole ecosystem, we have to put at the central at the center is actually the, the learners themselves. So it's very important to look at the learner experience 
the learner experience is not only the learning it's not only the learning experience but the whole experience the wholesomeness of the experience so the learner earnest journey the learner uh, uh, is actually uh, revolved around this okay so um when we talk about effective management of micro credential i have listed here as much as i can think of uh, a few um, these are the the, uh, the the different facets different aspects of what we need to pay attention to uh, when we managing the different uh, component in the, in the micro credential ecosystem first of all we have to start with the strategic intent okay I think this is a very, very important as to be uh, from the top down. Uh, you must be very clear of uh, the, the strategic direction uh, of what the micro credential is about. You cannot just simply embark on the micro credential and you, know, you no, cannot even tell uh, where you want to go with this program. What's the outcome? What's the bottom line here? Then the target groups, very, very important to identify the target groups demand are there demands for this, for your program? Capacity and readiness to build the program. Here we talk about uh, capacity building. Do we have enough capacity to deliver, to, to develop and deliver the program, to maintain the program, to sustain the whole uh, program? We are not talking about just having it, launch it, put it on or roll it out on the platform, uh, then forget about it. No, you cannot just abandon the thing. It is actually a continuous engagement. So it's very important at this point to look at the capacity. If we don't have the capacity, then build the capacity until to the, to the point that you are ready to, you know, uh, to go from end to end. Common users and example of micro-credential in education and workplace setting. So once we identify the target group, you know what they really want for that. Is it for the upskilling or lifelong learning and so on? So, this has to be spelled out very clearly uh, so that you can, uh, you can uh, design the content, the outcome, the content, the assessment, everything accordingly. Effective methods and strategies for designing micro credential. This is basically, we will take a lot of trial and error to develop the so called uh, a uh, uh, a process workflow that suit your people that suit your institution, that suits with all the facilities that you have, okay? Technologies for designing, issuing, and managing micro-credential. This is another big thing. Uh, there's a lot of technology behind this, um, especially if it involves, uh, you know, the assessment part, the authentication of the digital badges, everything. So the technology like blockchain and so on, the kind of platform that you use um, to, to Put your program so there are a lot of criteria here that we have to look at in terms of the technology the platform uh, the technology for the digital batch and so on and uh, again uh, strategies for connecting learning experiences to organizational performance using micro credential so micro credential is actually meant uh, to uh, deliver a very specific, very specific outcome in terms of skill, in terms of knowledge. So we want to know whether uh, once they have got the digital badge, meaning that they have acquired the necessary competency. So can they translate that competency into productivity in the workplace? So that's something that we need to look at, you know, how to facilitate the design of micro-credential to diverse stakeholders to communicate the value proposition of micro-credential to diverse audiences, strategies to help people optimize the value of earned micro-credential. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, when we talk about the whole ecosystem, we look at the end-to-end. -end. And I have not included here on the marketing side here. It's not a complete end-to-end -end here. I forgot to put on the marketing, but I have on another slide on the marketing aspect. I think on the next slide then. Okay, let's look at the next slide here. So I've divided into four parts here. The first thing, very, very important to me, uh, because from my observation, from my engagement with a lot of people, 
Uh, sometimes uh, they just go in and develop the micro credential. They don't start from here. I think it's very, very essential, very critical to start from the strategic part. Then only worry about the nitty gritty, the operational part. I always get questions when people are more concerned about the operational part, the details, you know, the student learning time, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> but then they forget about actually where exactly you want to go, you know. So the strategic part. So we have to define the strategic intent. Then this has to be taken up by the top management. So define what's your strategic direction. Then who is your target group or who are your target groups? Because that will determine the market demand. That will determine whether they will, be have, they will have demand for the program that you are going to develop. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of time, a lot of resources, energy, money, investment, and come up to nothing. Then only you identify the program. Maybe you want to start small, maybe with one small program first. Because it's good always to start small because you want to um, start to build up the capacity slowly because the learning curve can be very steep. The learning curve can be very steep depending on what you have in your institution in terms of readiness, in terms of the expertise that you have, uh, in terms of the subject matter expert that is willing to embark on this, in terms of how familiar they are with the technology, with the online and, and so on. So you identify the program, maybe start with one small program first to start the ball rolling. And then I think it's also very important, uh, in my opinion, to work together with the credible partners, with relevant and credible partners. So the collaborators and the partners. Um, I always say that, you know, if you want to go alone, you, if you want to go fast, you go alone, but you want to go far, you want to sustain. These are long kind of uh, something that's, you know, in, in um, a long, what we call it, in the long run, you require uh, a lot of energy. Uh, you, you, you need to work with other people. So you want to sustain. So therefore, it's good to work together with uh, partners that you feel comfortable with, uh, preferably the credible partners that can really pull in their weight and work together to develop an excellent micro-credential program. So that's the only strategic part. Then you need the drivers, okay? So these are people or group of people in the institution or in the organization that would drive the agenda, okay? So assuming the strategic part is clear, then the driver. Uh, in USM now, uh, initially we started off with work, having the working committee, but recently we have, another, we have set up another committee, uh, which is the steering committee. And this committee consists of basically the decision makers, the vice chancellor. Well, I'm talking about university here, maybe in, in non-academic um, non institution, uh, maybe the, the CEO perhaps, yeah. Then we have the bendahari, uh, people who can be, make a decision when come to money. Uh, we have the librarian and so on. So these are the steering committee that would uh, decide more on the policy aspect. Then we have the working committee. So as the name implies, working committee, uh, those people who are really on the ground really works. These are the workhorse, so to speak. So the working committee, um, myself representing uh, CDA is basically the secretariat and basically these are looking at the operational part mainly. The steering committee looking at the strategic part, the working committee looking at the operational part. We are talking about the, all this nitty gritty uh, thing. Then it goes down to the faculty level at the university at the institution or maybe at the department level. And again, this is another important, uh, these are the, 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 the bug has to stop somewhere, right? The bug has to stop somewhere. So these are the real, the, 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 the level where the, the work will, 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 you know, will, will start. So again, we need a lot strong support from the head, head of department. We need to have a specific team here, a team of developers, the, the team of uh, subject matter expert here. And we have the coordinators. The coordinators is actually at the faculty level or the department level and is very, very critical to appoint someone who is really committed. I must, I must stress this very strongly that uh, you need to identify very committed coordinators 
so that the program or the the, pro, the the plan the timeline can be can be uh, achieved yeah and then the coordinators here will communicate very closely with the working committee and this is I'm, I'm i'm sharing here actually the structure that we have in usm and i think so far it worked very very well okay now then come to the operational part the develop the development part this is actually where <laughs> a lot of energy a lot of headaches, a lot of investment of time and energy. This is where the learning curve, um, you know. So this is where we can we look at the once we have decided on the program now. So we will start. If the program is, is the micro credential is actually on the micro on the academic program, then we have to start to look at how do we unbundle the whole program and doing the mapping because uh, we want to make sure all the. Uh, we comply to all the accreditation um, requirements. So this is where we talk about, about the learning outcome. We talk about the, uh, the student learning time, the assessment, all everything that is uh, re re relevant to, to the accreditation requirement. Then having done that, we start to build the modules. Okay, um, Then we have the internal and external QC. Uh, then published then once it's published we start to get students we can get feedback and we use the feedback now to fit the the qc and also to the course developers uh, for them to do the so-called uh, uh, improvement and refining uh, the, the module based on the feedback okay and the fourth part here is the support and again i I cannot. Uh, I, I must emphasize this part because uh, this is very important in as part of the whole ecosystem in uh, managing uh, micro credential effectively. The support is very very important. Um, depending on the expert, the the, the cost developers uh, or the people involved, the subject matter expert involved, most likely they are not. Uh, they are not. They, they they need training. Okay, they need uh, training hand holding perhaps so this where the capacity building so where this where the training uh, series need to be need to be uh, done then we have to consider about the platform what kind of platform that you want to put your micro credential resources here resources here i'm i'm, I'm talking about people i'm talking about the like the, the technical people that would help uh, the software uh, the equipment that we need to, let's say, for video recording, uh, microphone, and, and everything. So these are all the resources needed uh, to facilitate the development of the program. And maybe some form of incentive. Because developing micro-credential, especially in university like USM Research University, this is considered as the ad additional task over and above the so-called the normal call of duty. <laughs> okay, So some form of incentive probably would help to 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 push things to to make people, to motivate people to you know um, to to do micro credential then marketing so this the the other end once we have got everything the micro credential program has rolled out uh, then what, what we need now is the marketing part we cannot have the cost developers to do also the marketing there's no way we can do that so we need to have the marketing team someone who will you know so a group that will take up this part for marketing and of course the full institutional support. So I think this slide basically captures uh, just now the, the, the ecosystem, the whole ecosystem. Um, so I just I just put it in in the in the different form and all this uh, in the end to end uh, aspect that we need to consider when we look at the whole uh, kind of management structure that we need uh, in, in delivering, designing and delivering and sustaining the micro-credential program. Okay. So again, this is just another slide to kind of uh, reiterate the point, as you can see here, um, at the heart of micro-credential, because we are talking about digital micro-credential, digital batch. Of course, you, you, you can do without the digital part. But if you do that, 
you don't leverage on the power of the technology to deliver uh, perhaps more efficient, more effective micro credential program. Okay, so um, for example, the authentication, we, we now we have the technology like blockchain. So in USM, we use uh, open learning platform where we have already integrated the digital batch. They are using the third party also. So the cost, everything have been embedded in the cost structure. And we have a blockchain technology behind it for authentication. But what you see here, uh, what you want to see here is uh, are the different, the different uh, component or the different parties involved here. So we have student, of course, uh, learners, we have the teachers, these are the instructors or the people. Um, this can be the same uh, subject matter expert who develop the course, okay? We have the accreditors, validators, and testers, employers, we have, uh, yeah. So th these are the different, uh, different uh, parties involved or stakeholders involved. So the target group, a little bit on the, on the target group, uh, you must identify first the right or specific um, specific target groups, because um, as specific as possible. For example, uh, we have program uh, in USM like for CPD program professional development. We target uh, nurses, nurses. So we have about hundred thousand plus nurses. Pharmacies. Okay, so we have about uh, twenty thousand pharmacies. So we we know our target group very specifically. We know what they need based on the, their competency, so-called competency framework. So we can develop the program specifically for this target group. And when we talk about target group, basically these are the four groups. They, they can be, uh, you, can, you can develop, for example, bridging program for school leavers that, um, that want to pursue formal qualification. Or you can provide micro-credential for upskilling program or reskilling program, or for personal development, lifelong learners. So this is what we call collectively as non-traditional students. The traditional students are those students enrolled in a full-time program, full-time academic program in our institution. But micro-credential is actually, basically we develop micro-credential mainly for this so-called non-traditional students. But somehow, if we develop micro-credential from the micro, from the academic program, we can design it in such a way so that we can provide a so-called taxonomy just now, the pathway, the pathway for those group who, interest, who are interested to get a formal qualification. For those who are not interested, they can still take some of this program, the modules and so on for personal or professional development uh, without, um, uh, tag, without uh, you know, requiring any form of uh, formal qualification. Example, for example, uh, when we talk about target group, let's say uh, HRD Corp now has launched their micro-credential program and we want to develop the program for uh, micro-credential uh, micro -credential program for HRD Corp. So we understand who, first we have to study who are their learners, who, who are the people who go to HRD Corp to take their program, mostly from industry. You know, they, they can utilize their levy and they can take the program. So what, how this micro credential can serve them. So these are some of the um, some of the reasons or some of the objective how this micro credential can can serve them. I'm not going to elaborate on this, but uh, but uh, basically to in among other things to 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 provide to address the skill gaps to provide insight into ongoing professional development development building a culture of continuous learning become inspired to seek new skill, boost engagement and productivity. And then they can take the accredita accreditation anywhere because it's portable, okay? And, and by understanding this, now we can develop the program uh, to, to serve the purpose, to fit the purpose. The program, so once we have identified the program, once we have identified the target group, then we can identify the program, determine the level of capacity that we have. So this is where the capacity building uh, will take place, how much effort that we need, how much investment in time and money. So there are two types of credential. One is based, developed based on the accredited program. One is a standalone program. For the first one, we have already, uh, MQA has developed the, launched the, uh, the guideline. The second one is still 
in the process, almost done. Okay. So again, I take the HRV Corp as an example of uh, developing a standalone program, or we can develop from the academic program, but we provide the structure and pathway. Um, and these are the areas, 24 areas. So meaning now, if we know our target group, if we know where we want to put our micro-credential to market our program, then we look at, oh, these are the areas, then that would help us, guide us as to what kind of program we want to develop. And uh, again, uh, I have this uh, slide, I think probably you have seen it. You can decide um, whether you go for high impact, low effort, or high impact, high effort, and, and so on. I would say that you know it's a good idea to start small with personal development program and professional development program, and then slowly go into academic program. Because the academic program, I think Dr. Tengku will share next uh, shortly, uh, is is uh, quite it is quite quite uh, complex and quite complicated. Okay, then uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's good to work together with partners. So as the African proverb say, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. This example of partnership that I mentioned just now, uh, I think one example from USM, uh, this uh, certification program, immunization for pharmacists. So in this program, USM worked together with Malaysian Pharmacy Society. So this program is certified by USM, recognized by Malaysian Pharmacy Society, and we have defined our role. So USM mainly to develop the program, develop the module, and MPS, the society will help in terms of marketing, in terms of recognizing and endorsing the program. Uh, and that will enable the pharmacists to take our program for their CPD. And the operational part, the process workflow, uh, this is where we go down into the, the, on the ground level, where we define the workflow uh, very clearly, systematically, so this is an example of what we have from USM. We divide into four different phases, uh, which basically the planning part, the development part, the development part, <coughs> uh, the quality assurance part, and also the, the marketing part we publish and then market. Then this is uh, from our School of Pharmacy. They have modified uh, our the workflow to suit their own work, their own way of uh, working. So they include actually the external reviewer as well here, as you can see. Yeah. And finally, the, the learner experience is also very important. Remember, when when we develop the program, uh, it must reach, it must achieve whatever outcome that we have defined. So again, when we look at the learner's experience, the end-to-end -end experience encountered throughout the micro-credential journey. And this provides the opportunity for us to influence the experience, to support, to encourage, clarify, advise, and intervene, intervene as necessary. And I have summarized in this form, um, in this diagram, the learner and the learner and earner micro-credential uh, journey, starting from here, awareness. So where, you know, how do we create awareness about our micro-credential program? Then the learner, we, we are taking the learner's uh, shoes now. Yeah? So they will, they will browse, they will look at different offerings, different pro training providers and so on. Then they will start consider, then decide. Then they will commit and they will enroll in the program. Then the pre-comments here, they will prepare and engage. Number five here, comments and focus, they start to, to learn. And depending how you design the program, they will have the sense of belonging. And then after that, they do all the assessment, they complete the, achieve the competency, they qualify, and then they will get the certification here, num number seven here, and they can claim the digital badge, which is uh, basically the credential to recognize that they have achieved the competency. Then the, of course, after that, they can share uh, with others. Okay, so uh, I think my time is up. So the rest of these uh, slides, I, I just provide uh, some examples. You, you, will have, you will have the slides later on. This is just example of how, based on the academic program, of how we do the unbundling uh, the program. So you can see this the whole uh, master's program. You, you can decide which part that you want. This is actually a hybrid program. 
So which part they want to develop as an online module uh, or, or as a micro-credential program. And this is the, mild, the kind of the, the roadmap as part of the managing the whole thing. Uh, so they have, they have a three-year roadmap, which uh, we encourage all the micro-credential team to have. And I think the, I have mentioned most of the thing here. And uh, the last two slides here, basically the challenges. Of course, uh, <laughs> uh, anything new, there, there, there'll be a lot of challenges, but that is where once we have achieved success, the sweetness come from all these challenges that we have, we managed to overcome. So uh, I think I don't want to elaborate further. I think I've mentioned some of this uh, in my presentation. And these are the six key points to take, again, uh, as a summary, important point that I mentioned, like work with credible partner, build a sustainable capacity and, and so on. So I hope, I hope I've shared um, uh, enough uh, essential points on managing effective management of micro credential. If you want to learn further, of course, uh, we, we have uh, together with my colleagues, I published this book, which you can get from our ebook e platform, USM ebook platform. There's a link. Maybe you want to take the picture of this slide because I, I added this slide after I have uh, shared the. So this one is not in the, in the PowerPoint that you will download. So please take the picture if you are interested to get this book. And yes, uh, the last slide, again, uh, maybe you want to take the picture because there's a link for you to download the PowerPoint. So my 40 minutes is up, uh, according to my time uh, here, uh, right on the dot. Uh, so thank you very much. I hope I have given value for your uh, time. Over to Dr. Lihana. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Karim. And thank you for making my life as a moderator easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know a lot of you have questions, but we'll reserve the question and answer after uh, at the end of today's session. Yeah? So if you have questions for either of these uh, spe uh, speakers, panelists, please just um, type them in the chat box as we go along. Okay. Our second speaker is also somebody who have been, been very much involved in uh, micro-credential. Okay? And also I think somebody you would also know if you have been working in this area. Okay. So Dr. Tengku Putri Norisha, Binti Tengku Shariman is currently the Deputy Director of Center for Lifelong Education and Learning Innovation in Multimedia University. Besides that, she's a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Creative Multimedia um, with a background in English. Yes? So you can see uh, for, for both of these panelists, we do not need to have initially this, um, we need uh, to be trained academically in this. Um, in ICT based programs. Okay, let me just read a little bit. Uh, well, uh, let me introduce Dr. Pumpukumfri, a very dedicated academician with more than 20 years' experience in teaching, doing consultation, and conducting research on the design and development of multimedia and digital based contents, especially for education or training purposes. Okay. So she's also very skilled in designing various digital learning materials and program plans while working closely with managers, executives, professionals, departments, and training team members to design top-notch instruct instructional materials. She, can also, she also organizes, plan, and implement the training needs of an organization to enhance professional knowledge and improve performance. So um, she'll be sharing with us her experience on development on micro credential development and also deployment. So I think we will also be learning a lot from her in this 40 minutes that she has uh, to share with us. Over to you, Dr. Right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liana. 
So uh, thank you to my, my Ken for inviting me to be to participate in this uh, forum and uh, just to share basically just to share my um, experiences uh, in uh, developing and deploying market credentials for MMU. I'm not a guru like uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Kari. In fact, I, I think he is my mentor. He has really helped us. In fact, I have MMU a lot. We have been calling him for training and he has shared like, his knowledge. And I think I'd like to thank you, Prof. Karim, eh, for actually uh, helping us eh, at MMU. Uh, and uh, so uh, to uh, thank you to my, my Ken. So good morning to all uh, my colleagues, uh, to uh, Prof. Irfan, Dr. Nizam and Dr. Lihana. Uh, let me just share uh, good morning uh, and Assalamualaikum. So let me just share my screen first. Okay, can everyone see? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, uh, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, so this morning, basically, I will basically share the lessons learned uh, that we have actually learned, uh, my team, uh, when we uh, went through the uh, process of developing and deploying market credentials for MMU. Um, so I think Prof. Kari has actually laid the foundation on the theories, uh, the ideas, and uh, about market credentials. I will not go in detail into all the, uh, you know, all the, uh, the, the basic foundation knowledge about market credentials. Um, and I think he would be the best person to explain more about market credentials. Huh? But rather, in my session, I will just basically uh, share what we have gone through and some of the challenges and some solutions that we um, tried huh, to, to do to overcome some of the problems that we faced. So basically, definition of market credentials for us, basically, we, we basically follow the MQA. Uh, this is the MQA definition. When we look at market is what is it? It's a digital certification of assess knowledge, skills, and competencies. Okay, and uh, the scope is in a very specific and narrow area of study or practice. And we have two types, can design market in, uh, in, in two types, uh, for two types, whether it's standalone or it's a component of an accredited program. Now, the purpose is, of course, to support the professional, technical and personal development of the learner. So these are definitely market that I think all of us are familiar with. And, and so based on this, we have, uh, <clears throat> MMU have decided that we, this is going to be our definition as well, because we feel that it's very, um, very clear definition of market credentials, uh, especially uh, for, our, uh, for our area. So the task of market credentials, of course, there are two types. There are the credit bearing market credentials and non-credit bearing, which is what as uh, Prof mentioned, there's now standalone market credentials. So we see here the difference is that uh, we look at credit bearing market credentials, the assessment is very aligned with formal qualification level. So for example, if we uh, you know, unbundle market credentials from, uh, uh, for example, an accredited academic program, like for in our case, we have unbundled from three different academic programs uh, from the masters of uh, business administration, masters of engineering, and masters of computer science, and so we're going to also uh, unbind it for the masters of creative multimedia. So basically, when we create the assess the assessment, it has to be uh, aligned with all the learning outcomes of the uh, original uh, program itself. Okay, and and when we unbundle, it's of course a pathway for admission to a formal qualification because the, the students can basically stack, they can take my credentials and they can stack it. And then in the end, we can basically do the credit completion, uh, the degree completion with the micro credentials that they've taken. And of course, we need to mirror the academic standards. So uh, quality assurance is very, very important. It is credit bearing micro credentials. So uh, we do have our, qual uh, our quality uh, unit to come in uh, to audit uh, how we actually develop our micro credentials. And in every level where we develop micro credentials, we have an approval body. For example, when we want to unbundle, we have to be, it has to be approved by the uh, faculty academic board, it also has to be approved by the um, university academic board and as well, and to be endorsed at the Senate level itself. So everything has to mirror the academic standards. Even when we do the exam, the assessment, it still has to go through the um, moderation process. So it, it mirrors the academic standards. Okay, but, but duration is almost similar, uh, slightly shorter. Uh, um, to the tar targeted qualification, but actually offers a lot of flexibility because they can actually, you know, uh, because every market that we divide is only about 
two weeks long. So they actually pick and choose which one could they ensure they want to take first and which one they want to take later. So that it, it does offer flexibility uh, in terms of when and when when they want to take the you know, the particular my credentials. Now, non-credit bearing or standalone is more um there's more freedom huh? because it's that the assessment does not align with formal qualification level. It is not a pathway for admission to formal qualification. However, it can be credit transferred to APLC. It may not conform to any academic standard and the duration varies up to you. Huh? How, how long do you want it to be? Huh? Uh, depends on the micro-credential that you would like to develop. So we are now focusing more on the credit bearing micro-credentials, but also, we're now uh, also starting about to start on developing standalone micro-credentials uh, in MMU. But we have actually started with the credit bearing market credentials and I, I just now prof kari mentioned start small uh but in mmv it seems like we're not starting small um and we actually learned the hard way so maybe um maybe starting small is a better idea uh, but we we have we started actually quite big uh, and and we are, we are, and and we have learned a lot of uh we, have, we face a lot of problems on in, along the way uh but i think uh, today uh i think we have uh, so far, we have been able to offer uh, micro credentials to many of our uh, clients. Eh? All right, so the micro credential, let me share this one. This is like, how do I get it? Okay, okay the, for our micro credential operational framework, we actually start with uh, idea generation. And idea generation actually comes from the faculty. Okay, so what we have done is that. Um, we have what we call a faculty uh, micro credential champions appointed at every faculty, and then um, and they would actually generate the idea with uh, subject matter experts, you know, uh, within the faculty, and and initially it is also uh, with an industry partner, meaning that we we'll always do what we call uh, 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 you know um, survey with our industry partners to find out what are the actual needs of the industry, for example. Okay, so for example, like the faculty of engineering, even though they are uh, unbundling from the uh, academic program. However, the the, the micro credentials that you develop in terms of the content itself for the topics is very in is in line with what the industry needs. Okay, uh, so so any generation will actually start from the faculty, and then it, it, next stage once the faculty uh, next stage is design development that involves uh, the approval of the of the micro credentials that we intend to develop, uh, and that involves the academic board. And for development, of course, it involves LEARN. Uh, LEARN is the department, that, uh, the center that I come from, the Center for Lifelong Education and Learning Innovation. And I'm actually in charge of the Lifelong Education Department. Uh, so basically, for development, uh, design development will be involved as well. And also, we have a, a multimedia production unit to actually develop uh, in, uh, the, 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 the self instruction materials, uh, the seams uh, for the uh, micro credentials. And in terms of quality assurance, we, we involve as the SQA. SQA is our, um, uh, our quality assurance uh, uh, center. And of course, LEARN is also involved in quality assurance. And of course, the faculty champions, uh, micro credential champions. And then for marketing and sales, uh, so you see, you have so many stakeholders within the whole operational framework. Eh? So we have the um, MMU Synergy, which is, which is our commercial arm. They will do the B2B, meaning they will do the marketing of the market credentials to uh, our business partners, to the industry. While SMART, which is our uh, marketing unit in MMU, they will do the marketing to the consumer. Okay, um, And then in terms of management, deployment, and award of deal badges uh, for B2B, uh, to business with our business partners industry it will involve learn and of course the MMU synergy as well as the faculty as well as ERU for, uh, for credit uh, completion and uh, or degree completion and for B2C uh, uh, meaning uh, MMU to consumers of course we involve learn faculty again uh, our exam uh, records unit for again uh, degree completion and then of course we have our micro credential learning platform which is very important so like uh, uh, at USM, you also uh, currently at the moment we are use, we are also um, uh, using uh, open learning because we feel at the moment we feel the open learning uh, understands the whole micro credential ecosystem in Malaysia and you know they they're very clear about you know, and create requirements and the best thing is they also they provide uh, as well the uh, digital credentialing platform is also integrated with open learning so that's the reason why at the moment we are using open learning. So we basically we use um, the open learning basically for the registration management of the learners, 
for delivering the micro credential uh, itself with the with SIMS. Uh, also, where we assess, we also award the batch, and we also award the Malaysian micro uh, 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 Malaysian micro credential uh, statement, and also where we do the payments transaction. Okay. So this is overall the operational framework. So we see here that it involves a lot of stakeholders. Uh, it's not just learn, it involves, you know, from different departments within the university. Uh, so the in terms of uh, MMU, the financial features that we currently focus on is, of course, it's one is credit bearing. At the moment, uh, we, we are just starting on standalone. So basically, uh, it is usually a component of uh, of a formal qualification. Maybe we've taken the uh, the market credential from a formal qualification, meaning from an accredited program, and it's industry driven. That uh, the, the way that even though it's unbundled from uh, an academic program, our academic program has always been developed uh, in line with industry needs. Anyway, uh, we we have a lot of uh, industry experts coming in to always review our curriculum. And however, the when we develop the content itself, the SIMS especially, and, and the assessment is always in line with the industry. So it will continue, uh, it will meet the needs of the continuing professional development requirements needed by the industry to upskill uh, the employees. Huh? For, so for example, uh, our engineering uh, degree, uh, our engineering market credentials is currently, we are currently offering to uh, industry in Penang. And what we do is when whenever we develop the content, it's always like, um, we include a lot of case studies of, um, you know, of the industry within the content. So there is a lot of uh, work in sense of you know instructional design, uh, you know working together with the SME. So as the point that Prof Kari mentions now, you need very dedicated and committed individuals. That's very very important because actually designing um, the content to make sure it's industry driven. Yeah, we need this. You know, we need the SMEs to work closely with our instructional designers and you know we, and as well as with our industry partners. So to make sure that you will actually meet the needs the needs of the industry. Okay, delivery is very flexible because we can we can offer through online. It can be conventional. It can be hybrid mode. So it depends on our client. All right. So um, and duration as well. However, even though now currently we make it about two weeks for market credential, it still depends on the client. If the client wants a longer time frame, we can still do it, or even less, we can still can still do it as long as in the end, when the learners. Uh, do the assessment, we must make sure that they will be able to achieve the linear outcomes. Okay. All right. And then, uh, sorry. And then uh, it's outcome based, meaning uh, the learning that is supposed, that is expected of the learners from the market credential, it has to be realistically uh, and clearly stated to the learners, and it is something that can be measured. So it's always, uh, again, it's like in outcome-based learning, even in micro credential, even though it's micro credential, because the linear outcomes is still based on the original uh, course. Huh? It's personalized <clears throat> because I said the pedagogy does allow learners to let their own pace. Uh, they can pick and choose. They can, how they stack is depends on the learners. And, uh, and it's secure and shareable because um, once we award the deal badges, deal badges are secure. It's, it's authenticated because the blockchain technology, it can be authenticated by MMU. It can shared, be shared online uh, securely with others. So what's, one thing good about Markedon is that, you know, unlike a normal academic program, you have to wait four years. Then only you can, you can display your competency uh, of, of specific knowledge or skills. But for um, what employers like about uh, Markedon is that for every <coughs> level of uh, you know, for every micro credential, which has a specific linear outcome uh, and a focus on specific skills or knowledge, you can immediately, uh, you know, show your credential that you have you have this competency through your deal badges. So you can just add on into your CV uh, your different competencies. So, uh, so that's one thing good about deal badges. You don't have about micro credentials that you don't have to wait four years uh, at the end of four years or the end of two years for your masters, for example, to show your competency in specific knowledge or skill. And of course, it's very transparent. Uh, we have to be transparent, we have to be very clear to learners what is the outcome, how we're going to do the teaching learning, how we're going to assess, and so on. So they, because, because they're adults, because they are, they are basically adult learners. So they, they need to know. We need, we need to give them all this information so they can actually uh, choose the market that will be suitable for their needs. Okay, And it will help them to upskill, reskill, 
uh, them uh, themselves. Eh? <clears throat> Right, so challenges that we face, for example, uh, we're talking about <clears throat> when you want to develop uh, uh, micro dashes, there are challenges with the management, top management, and then challenges within the steering committee uh, with uh, the faculty, because of course we need, um, being from a university, we need uh, a lot of um, cooperation for the faculty members, uh, who will be the SMEs, who will be the, the subject matter experts and the trainers, and also when we deploy, we have to be very careful, we have to think about the learning experience and we have to ensure that they will be able to achieve learning outcomes. And of course, marketing, because there's no point developing uh, market credentials if we are not able to, people are not aware of our market credentials, we cannot sell our market credentials. So we're talking about <clears throat> the challenges of management. Um, uh, a group, a, a few of us, for example, myself and my team, uh, when we started, way back in, in 2017, um, the new steam management have never heard of about, I mean, they, they, they heard somewhere about market dimension, but was not really, uh, they were not really aware. They heard of it, but they were not really aware. <coughs> so um, so we had to, you know, really buy in. We had to buy in the, manage, the management, actually, uh, my team. Uh. Um, so luckily at that time, we were part of the uh, future university strategy uh, work group. So during that, that, that the series of workshops we had <clears throat> with the university management, that's when we started to um, create awareness about market credentials. It was way back in 2017, which I think, I don't know, maybe USM, USM has been uh, developing market, market credentials for some time, but majority of universities have not yet developed market credentials, something quite new. They've heard of MOOCs, but <clears throat> they always think MOOCs are something that um, more for, for free, free education. Uh, so uh, being a private university <laughs> is always about, um, you know, profit. So uh, so it, it really took us <clears throat> uh, some time to buy in the, the management uh, to, for them to really understand the potential of uh, market potential. So, uh, and, and explain that it is a, this is a learning innovation, it's the future. And, and also the fact that market credentials is part, part of the entire lifelong education landscape. So you might understand that my university, we are basically, even though we have always been using uh, technology, we, we, all, we have always uh, practiced blended learning uh, and a lot of, you know, uh, how do you say, uh, digital, digital applications in, in class, you know. Um, but uh, lifelong education has not really, um, because we are conventional university. I like, I like um, uh, USN has always had uh, the Jarak Jauh program. Uh, uh, ODL is uh, something quite new for MMU. Eh? So, however, when 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 we uh, try to buy in the, the management, we had to explain that micro credential is, is part of the whole landscape of life education. Is uh, micro credential is going to be uh, the future in for, especially for lifelong education besides OGL, eh? and 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 in the end, after buying in the lecture. Uh, the the uh, management, they reform learn, which is the center, uh, the center. Uh, so meaning that what's important is uh, buying in the support of the management is very, very important. Right? If the management are not uh, not really aware, um, you know, it's, you really, uh, it's very important to create, to create awareness uh, to the uh, our top management. So we need the support of the management in order to go ahead with this uh, strategy uh, initiative. Okay. So as a result, after buying in the, with the management, we we are able to form uh, learn. Okay, and we have under learn we have uh, three different uh, departments. Uh, the others are more for uh, on campus, uh, more for more specifically focused on on campus uh, programs in terms of training the lecturers, um, in terms of uh, uh, learning analytics and so on. But for my department, we are more focused on lifelong education. So in, in our lifelong education department, we have the APEL unit, we have the lifelong education unit, and uh, we have uh, our system manager, and we also have learning specialists or instruction designers who focus on development uh, and deployment of ODL and multi credential programs. And we work, of course, very closely with the faculty. So basically, this is some of the uh, tour for our center, OK? Right, I don't have to go through, but you can read. Huh? One.
Oh, yeah, no way. My slide. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> okay. So basically, is what we we do uh, uh, in that, in summary of what we're doing is that uh, the our the centralized steering committee or basically now is is learn. We are we 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 are actually the the center that would uh, be uh, basically coordinating the whole uh, macro financial uh, strategy. Um, and um, the whole entire operational framework that the one I showed you, the, the slide I showed you previously. So we actually um, came up uh, basically the MC uh, market policy and framework. Okay. Uh, and uh, of course, there's a lot based on the MQA GDP. Yeah? And, uh, and then we also uh, developed the market cost templates. Okay. Uh, this is where the lecturers would do the unbundling. Uh, to making sure that, uh, for example, if it's a 120 credit hour uh, course, how do you unbundle to different macro credentials, uh, to different, uh, you know, how do you unbundle to specific SLTs and so on. So this is, so we have a cost, the MC cost templates that the uh, SME would need to fill up and needs to be approved by the faculty academic board as well as the uh, University Academy Board and endorsed by the Senate. And then we have also developed the SOPs, the SOPs for, we have many SOPs, SOPs for uh, MC uh, macro credential approval, uh, SOP for macro credential uh, development, uh, uh, macro credential deployment, and for even deployment, we have different types of deployment, uh, deployment with, uh, with uh, specific uh, in, um, uh, customers uh, to the public, uh, and then also uh, SOP when we do it uh, with agents, with our agents. So we have different SOPs, okay? Um, so this SOPs uh, is to ensure basically, to ensure the quality uh, of, our, of our, uh, MC, our micro credential uh, development and, and deployment. Eh? So the SOPs will, will, will be monitored by our quality assurance unit. Eh? And then we also appointed uh, our macro-credential champions, which we uh, learn, uh, we, we coordinate. We coordinate the macro-credential champions. Macro-credential champions are basically, they will champion market development at the faculty level. And uh, they will monitor the, SL, the SMEs and the trainers at the faculty level. And, they are, uh, and we will work together with the faculty, especially through the, um, uh, the macro-credential champions. And of course, we also provide guidelines uh, on micro credential development to the lecturers, uh, to the um, uh, to the um, SMEs, the trainers, and also we also provide guidelines for the students as well on how to learn. Uh, you know, in uh, when they are you know when they have registered for micro credentials and how to use open learning, how 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 do you use the seeds and so on. We also have guidelines for the students and guidelines for the lecturers. So we have that as well. Okay. So when we when supporting the lecture is very important when we unbundle it, we unbundle. For example, here we see here that uh, for example, in a credit program which is 120 credits, we usually unbundle the three different uh, MCs. Uh, we, we, we unbundle two different courses, and that can even be further unbundled into smaller units of instruction. Okay. Uh, so of course that depends on uh, how they fill up that course template. And then once one, this is a bit approved by the academic committee at the faculty university level, they will start development of some instruction materials. Now, we, of course, we need to develop according to instruction design principles. And we have uh, SMEs, the learning specialists or instruction designers and multimedia production unit to work together with us. And of course, we need to prepare the lecture readiness in terms of, you know, for, uh, for the SMEs who are going to develop and also for the trainers who are going to train to be the trainers during uh, the market-dential delivery. So uh, we invited all the extreme speakers at Prof Karim and, and other uh, Prof Andy, all the to, to, to train our our um, our lecturers. But of course, of course, now we are also training our lecturers that uh, for for sustainability. We are now training our lecturers to to how to use certain softwares to develop their own self instruction materials later, uh, giving them instruction on how to use Genially, Canva, and so on. Eh? So that's for sustainability, uh, for future sustainability of uh, market credential development. So, uh, so in terms of I I'm bundling this now. For example, this one uh, course that we developed the uh, change management, the original course change management, we have unbundled to three different uh, market credentials. So, um, 
So every market credential is about 40 SLT hours. Duration is two weeks. There are no final examination. Everything if, uh, is um, currently is online distance learning mode, uh, but but we uh, and it has synchronous face to face class session. Um, you have also asynchronous learning activities. You also have this. Uh, we also have other e learning activities. But however, this can is still flexible. It can if the client, for example, wants it to be hybrid, it can also be conducted hybrid. Okay, and another one is the master engineering. We master engineering because it's hundred and sixty credit hours. We have unbound to do four different macro credentials. Um, and this one is more blended learning mode because it's engineering, so they still need some hands on. So, um, so it's about 60 percent online, about forty percent face to face. Okay, so these are least of micro credentials that we have unbundled from eight different uh, subjects from the master of business administration, uh, master engineering, microelectronics. Uh, these are different subjects that we have unbundled. Okay, so. So to the, support the faculty, um, we want to develop the sims. Uh, we of, of course follow the instruction design. I think Dr. Uh, Irfan is very familiar uh, with Daniel principles. But basically, uh, we always organize around well-defined and specific instruction. A very small topic, uh, usually uh, one learning, one or two learning outcomes only. Okay, and the some instruction unit contains, uh, you know, the different uh, content needed for a student, uh, for a learner to understand the, the topic, okay? And example stimulus could be, you know, videos, uh, interactive content and animation, uh, pre-recorded lectures and so on. So, okay, so there's some features of SIMS. I, okay. I think that I don't have to go through in detail. But these are the types that we have developed. So we have currently a uh, static slide. We also have interactive content where you know, learners can actually interact with the content. Uh, we have, of course, pre-recorded lectures and we'll have videos as well. The type of sims that we are currently developing in MMU and we, are, uh, we hope we can, of course, enhance this further. Okay. So these are some of the examples, videos and pre-recorded lecture, interactive content. And then uh, what's important is that because we are working, uh, we want the content to be uh, meet to meet the to upskill uh, the employees of industries. So that's why we have include a lot of authentic industry based case studies, huh? and we have worked closely with the industry, especially to create these case studies. So uh, this is our overview. This is also sharing by uh, Prof Karim when we deploy uh, the micro credential module. Uh, uh, these are the some things we need to think about. Okay, uh, they, they of course always an overview introduction by the uh, lecturer. Okay, so all this we need to train. We we need to train the lecturers uh, on how to use open learning to do all this. So we do have sessions for lecturers on how to use open learning uh, to de to deploy and deliver my credentials. Okay, so because they always need to start with an overview. Uh, you know, actually explaining, it could be a short video, it could be a face to face session where they actually introduce an overview about the, the market credential. Then we, we provide content, which is all the self instruction materials, or even, you know, other materials as well, other resources as well, um, lecture notes, uh, ebooks that they can access from the li uh, library, and so we do provide. And then, of course, the activities okay, that they need to do. Uh, for example, non-face-to-face -face activities like in some collaborative good work, uh, some problem solving, okay, uh, and then of course there is an assessment. There need to be an assessment in order for us to award the dual batch. So the assessment is usually continuous assessment, whether an assignment, a mini project, even an online test or quiz. Now, of course, we do provide other learning resources besides the actual uh, learning content. Eh? So this is a slide I think, for one uh, by Prof Karim, and we actually practice this for Karim in MMU. <laughs> we are doing it now, and we train the lecturers to actually do uh, the trainers to actually carry out all these uh, components of the micro, micro credential module. So, uh, but be, but even before we uh, actually deploy it, we always do the micro credential course setup. So, which we, we actually now categorize, uh, we have two categories at, at the moment, which is more business and management and engineering. And next, we're going to have uh, two more, which is computer computing and uh, creative multimedia because we are a multimedia university. 
Okay, and um, when we do the cost setup, uh, so under basic management, we have different macro credentials. So for when we do the cost setup, uh, basically we will provide, uh, we, will, we will actually have a um, cost setup session with the trainer, okay, and, and actually show him, you know, where he can upload the the uh, vid, the um, seams, uh, you know how to do assessment. So we have actually uh, as as uh, Prokam just said just now, it's actually hand holding. At the first stage, we do the hand holding, but now as more and more lecturers are becoming uh, more and more confident of being marketing trainers, uh, I think we are slowly uh, you know. Uh, Allowing the uh, mark, mark, mark credential champions to take over. Okay, so we have. Uh, so at, at the beginning, it was a lot of hand holding, but now I think the the faculties are more independent uh, in terms of uh, setting up the courses and so on. But we still provide training, uh, especially now, especially training on different types of pedagogy for adult learners and so on. Uh. So yes, at the beginning, there is a lot of hand holding with the faculty. Okay, so this is the basically the open learning uh, interface. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so basically, the, when we deploy it, we learn. Uh, when they learn, is market neutral market It means that they learn using some instructional materials, like watching videos or viewing interactive slides. Uh, there are some face-to-face -face synchronous uh, online class sessions. For example, with the we have um we are currently offering marketers to China students, and they want that. Uh, they want the face-to-face -face sessions and we are not we're not using team or we're using din talk in fact with the china students um and so and we also have online learning activities and also independently so all together it it, 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 it the SLT hours of 40 SLT hours per micro connection okay and so once we have passed we need to pass the assessment you'll be awarded with the batch which is our deal batch that we have designed and we'll have the uh this is only uh, the batch we designed for the okay sorry what's wrong okay the deal batch that we designed for the um bit management is yellow color so we have different colors for different uh different um fields huh? so the yellow is for the management huh? Uh, business management field. And of course, we need to award the machine market statement, which is like a transcript because this is, uh, of course, uh, um, something that we need to do uh, uh, and uh, for to be to be for uh, later on for degree completion. This is a uh, compulsory uh, by the uh, NQA. Yeah? Okay. So when we award the market credential, it is something uh, deal batch that we award for market credential. Um, very very important that it is um, it is secure, okay? Because we have all the information about the skills, who is the learner, when it was issued, uh, and the information has to be valid. It has to be verified. So it's very important it has secure. So we are uh, so since um, we have subscribed to Open Learning, and Open Learning does have uh, a secure uh, digital credential platform that awards as a batch, okay? All right. Right, so what's good about the bash, it can be shared. Once they, they get it, they can just share it in any social media sites and so on. So that's good. One thing good. I think uh, I think they're very excited about this uh, because we are also currently running uh, the leadership program in Telecom Malaysia and they're all very excited at the fact they can share their little badges uh, with the um, you know with uh, uh, with with different people. Eh? Okay. Okay. So in so the journey is basically like this. Um, for 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 when we deploy it to the register to learn what market credentials to the MMU on online learning portal through open learning they complete the course they pass the assessment and they earn a little badge which they can share they can just advance their career by sharing their little badges but of course we highly encourage them to further their studies by enrolling the MBA program once they end when once they meet the minimum entry requirement or through via upper A qualification they can we can directly uh it's not credit transfer basically they can do degree completion up to 24 course credits in the MBA program, but eight, eight subjects uh, from the market credentials awarded. And then they just need to complete another three subjects and the final project to graduate. And then we will, they will then they will be awarded with the uh, MBA postgraduate degree. Okay. Uh, but we're looking into the next stage is where I think we're going to develop everything, not just eight, but all into uh, market credentials except the final project. All right. 
So we have now currently master business administration and we have as well the master engineering. So in terms of marketing, uh, we see that we look at Google search traffic, uh, the growth of market credentials, the interest over time on market credentials has really increased exponentially uh, from when started in 2015 until now 2022, uh, especially since the uh, COVID pandemic. And, um, and uh, in according to the future jobs report, <clears throat> the World Economic Forum, uh, but 50% employees will need reskilling by 2025. So we see here there is a lot of, there is market uh, for market credentials. Okay. And we see here that uh, OE, o, OECD um, education chief, he mentioned that universities must, must change or lose their place to alternative education providers. Because now um, market credentials can also be offered not just by universities, but also other education providers so if you do not jump in onto the bandwagon uh we may lose our place to alternative education providers okay all right so and then we see here that uh you know you see here uh the forecast uh, uh in terms of uh um how uh online degree and market credentials market will be by 2025 okay so we see here, uh, in many ways, uh, market credentials, when they deploy market credentials, we see that now that many universities are actually working together and, you know, and, and, and actually offering uh, market credentials through a portal together. So maybe we see open learning, there are various, I think we can say open is a platform for market credentials now with many universities going through market credentials, but still I feel that we are working in silos and I think we still need to collaborate more between our, you know, our it's different institutions okay so we see here again another one uh, irish university association they have working together the different universities here are, are working together uh, in market credential development so i so for me uh the future is we need to collaborate as prof Kari mentioned uh, not with partners uh, partners meaning like uh, different organizations so we are working with for example with mcmc to develop telecommunications uh uh micro credentials for the telecommunications industry but i also feel we should work with other universities to offer micro credentials because we do have it under ggp where universities can work together and we can recognize each other micro credentials you know or even develop joint micro credentials and i think that is the way to go huh, we, uh, in the future and 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 we need to be able to you know aggressively market to employers because uh, they may uh, want to upskill their staff, but they may not have the have enough awareness about market credentials. They, they need to know that market credentials are, are not as costly as a four, three, two, two to three year uh, degree program, and it's more flexible. And actually, market credentials can actually fulfill uh, and um, the needs of their employees in terms of uh, upskilling eh, and reskilling. And we also need to follow up with existing leads and explore new marketing channels. Uh, maybe we need to uh, basically we look at our market. We need to basically segment our leads according to their career stage, their specialty interests. And then we basically design our market ventures according to these different career stages, specialties, and interests. Um, so we're looking and maybe we're looking into different, as I said before, we're now looking into developing um, standalone market credentials more for CPD, like what uh, um, uh, USM is doing, especially for the nursing and pharmacy uh, group, uh, special specialty interest. So we're more, since we're multi-million, we're looking into the telecommunications industry and other industries. Uh, so we can then do promotions and then of course we need to highlight learning pathways make sure that we're able we need to highlight uh, on our website uh about market credentials the, the different pathways so learners can see you know this is how the pathway for me you know when i take different market credentials how would this uh, uh by taking the market credentials will lead to different certificates so they can actually visualize uh, the way forward to gain certain um uh certificates huh? uh order badges and, and so on certifications huh? and of course provide a lot of social proof and testimonial uh from your existing clients uh and that will also attract uh the market as well huh? so we have this also and uh, my department we are not doing the marketing although i do assist 
in briefing market credentials when they go out to market and they, they can call me Dr. Tengku come and, and explain about market credentials. I do follow them. But we actually have our marketing unit and we also have our synergy with our commercial arm to do the marketing. Eh? Okay. So uh, so we this is our planning uh, platform. And, and this is basically our MA market credential basically um, unpacked. Uh, when we say we unpack, we unbundle into basically three to four market credentials. If it's 120 credit hours, usually three. If it's 160, it's usually four. Uh, they can get a little batch of the successful completion of each market credential. They need to pass the assessment. It's affordable because you can pay as you learn. And there's no advance payment. There is no exam fees. You pay at one. You pay at one go. Okay, so it's much more affordable compared to uh, the uh, normal academic program. And you can also and earn your master's degree. You can enroll into the master's program at any point of time. And you can just you know transfer basically do the degree completion. And the fact that is uh it, it is offered through online this is any mode. Although as I, as I mentioned before, it doesn't have to go online only. You can uh. Or open learning or open this learning mode. It can also be, you know, hybrid or be conventional, it depends on the client. But basically, it can be completed within two weeks if it's done uh, online. Eh? Uh, okay. All right. So I think, that, I think that's all that Tiliana. Basically, if you and anyone would like to contact us, uh, feel free to contact me. These are my numbers, uh, my number, my number. Uh, and our email. So feel free if you need uh, any assistance or you need you more questions, you can just contact me directly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tengku. All right, I think we we would all agree that, you know, uh, the wheels are turning inside and we're, uh, we're excited to go, but also knowing that there are still, there is still a lot to learn. So, um, but let me assure you, these two people are really very helpful people. So do contact them. Now, time for some questions and answers. Yeah. Uh, I have some of the participants have actually posted their questions when, during their registration. So I've collected them and I've put them, you know, because some of them are similar to each other. So if you think your question have not been um, asked, feel free to put it in the chat, but I've actually uh, collated them and rephrased them so that we don't get the same question over and over again. Okay, so my the first one is for Prof Karim. Okay. So Prof Karim, so can an accredited program be delivered in different location? locally and internationally you know when we're doing this collaboration which is really also tied to a, another question since micro credential has three routes based on the mqa guidelines single hcp multiple hcp and hcp with other providers so how would they work together if they decide to go for professional certification and you know when they are all from different locations so how would this which ties back to the earlier question, how then do you deliver this? Thank you. Can I get the first, the first question first? <clears throat> uh, okay. Is it in the, in the chat box? Uh, it's not in the chat box. It's in the Excel file that Ms. Lo shared with us earlier. Excel file? Yeah, when they registered earlier. Mm -hmm. Some of them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> right, it's okay, it's okay, bro. So just yeah. this one then. So you know, yeah. there are different locations, even if it's from the same HCP, one HCP offering it, but the instructors are not actually with the university. So how does how would that work? Or not located in with that oh. university offering it? How would that work? I think for <clears> the <throat> uh, we are talking about academic accredited, uh -huh. uh, accredited, accredited uh, academic program, right? Oh, yes, um, I think so. I think a lot think, of uh, the people here are interested in that. Yeah, I think one of the advantages of micro micro credential because it's modular. Once you have, once you have got the structure of all the modules that you want to develop, um, you can actually get the not only from our internal subject matter expert. But this is where we can collaborate with other 
external collaborators uh, so that we can get actually multiple experts from outside our our universities it could be i think uh, it could be in uh, nationally in malaysia or it could be from uh, outside malaysia i think that we need to encourage that because uh, the the beneficiaries would be our students because for <clears throat> for the whole program they will get the best professors the best um the best uh, lecturers to teach the course so um i think that's basically one of the ultimate objective of my confidential apart from flexibility but the flexibility of of modular format would allow the module to be developed say uh, expert from industry so get you get a lot of input from industry expert in uh, in some of the modules now maybe experts from uh, abroad from outside malaysia so i think uh, that that uh, very much encourage what would be the, what is the next question i hope that will answer the question otherwise uh, they can ask again <laughs> Yeah, yes, to the participant, yes, you can actually post questions yeah. here. I'm just at this point, uh, uh, the questions that, you know, when you initially registered, there there are some who actually posted Maybe Dr. Questions. Tunku want to add to that? Um, um, yeah, yeah yes. I think it, it's, it's very good if we can collaborate. For example, you know, collaborating with MCMC to develop some marketing for telecommunications industry. Hmm. And, we have in, and we have involved their SMEs. Okay, so when we develop the, the, mod, the market credential uh modules we actually we sit, actually sit down with the smes mm -hmm. and we look at how we can integrate the topics uh within um the uh the market itself and now we're going to move forward we are also going to work with university jada soon mm -hmm. to do, do some joint market credentials uh yeah. by we're looking at uh basically some courses that can be uh credit basically so-called transferred to both universities Okay, so uh, because for example, let's say if a man is a marketing course, usually the theories are almost the same. You know, the theories that they learn in marketing is almost the same. You know, uh, but you know, but we have of course have to sit down at the SME in Mr. Jada and SME in our university. We have to sit down, look at and 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 and, and ensure that we can be able to meet the, the the curriculum for both universities so that it can be credit transferred to both universities. So so we look at the third model on GGP. Uh, in the mm -hmm. MGP, we're going to start developing with uh, with other universities as well, and of course we welcome yeah. other universities in Malaysia also to work with, to work with us. But uh, you said Jada came to us and they wanted to do some uh, collaboration with us. Of course, we have to start with MOA. Uh, we need to do a memorandum of uh, mm. agreement, of course, first with yeah. this as well. Okay. I think we need to leverage on the idea of consortium. Uh, which I think in the guideline in the GGP, they've uh, actually spell out uh, yeah. on the consortium idea. So I think we can start with our own small uh, consortium in Malaysia, among the Malaysian universities, uh, public and private. And then we can expand that also to include partners, institutions from outside as well. So the, the idea of consortium is actually we can co-develop, co-develop the program. Uh, <clears throat> because if, if we want to go alone, you know, it will take time to develop the full, let's say, the full diploma or whatever program, uh, and bundle it and and develop the module. And the experts only come from one university, so I think the time has come now for us with the micro credential uh, to make it a real game changer here. So let's go for collaboratively co-create the program. Uh, of course, the details of who does what and, and so on. That again, that's the operational part. But conceptually, I think we go for we can go for that ideas. Totally agree. We never carry. Yeah. In in USM, I think I have received a few inquiries already uh, because they want to get uh, people from other universities outside Malaysia. So they ask how to go about in terms of the license of uh, of learning license, the platform that we're using. So I can see now people are start moving into that action, which is a very good sign. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Prof. 
uh, I think most, a lot of them here are very interested in the accreditation part, but there is also, perhaps this is where my kind training unit can, uh, can pick, it, pick up and perhaps we can have somebody from MQA to actually answer the questions. But uh, for Prof Karim and Dr. Tengku, there are some questions here that are very much related uh, with accreditation. If you feel comfortable answering them, please just go ahead and answer them. Um, but we, I would not want you to feel burdened to answer questions related to accreditation if you yeah. feel that you know you should. Uh, and I think perhaps my country unit uh, would do you know, we could do, we could do something where the MQE people are panelists to do this. Okay, but in terms of the, as, uh, there are some questions about un, the unbundling part. So this is for Dr. Putri first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many unbundled accredited course each university uh, can offer? How is the management of credit bank, which I think you have answered. How is the management of credit bank of the micro credential learners are done? And uh, there's an interest in terms of what's the uptake of micro credential module so far, either accredited or standalone. And also if the unit earned in micro credential uh, does not, it's not enough, does not achieve what is in the unbundled program. So how can the HGI top this up? Thank you. Okay. Uh, basically, we follow the guidelines of the GGP, whereby for conventional universities, uh, no, we, we can actually unbundle all the subject, no problem. But when we deliver, it has to be, uh, it follows the GGP guideline, which is that for conventional program, it can only offer up to 60% online. Eh? But uh, we, we have actually unbundled most of the courses. We intend to unbundle, in fact, uh, for engineering, we unbundled all the courses except the final project into uh, Micro credentials. So what we unbundled, as I mentioned just now, is that we have unbundled, like it was a four credit uh, hour, 160 credits, so unbundled to four different micro credentials with 40 SLT hours. And, and we make sure that uh, what's very important is that the learning outcomes will still be achieved through the assessment from every micro credential. In the end, you're able to map to all the learning outcomes in the, or, in the original program. So that's when the so that when we, when we do the degree completion, it's easy for us to, to transfer to the program, okay, to get the degree. So uh, that's where, as I mentioned, is quality assurance is very very important. Uh, the SOP is very important, and uh, we are monitored very closely. Uh, we do the, the the unbundling with the SMEs. Uh, it, it needs to be approved at the academic level, and as well, it will be monitored by our our quality assurance at every level. So we want to make sure that it will be. Uh, something that would be acceptable to NQA, okay? Uh, because I think in the near future, NQA will, will they mentioned to us, our market will be audited together with the original program. So we're ready to be, we need to be ready for the audit. <laughs> uh, that's what the NQA mentioned, they mentioned to us, that there will be an audit and they will audit together, for example, with the MBA program, with the Master Engineering program, we will be audited together. So we must, uh, what, what's important is that it has to be aligned with the SLT of the original course, also with the learning outcomes has to be achieved by all the learners. Okay, so even if they, for example, we are to three different market credentials for one subject, if they fill one, we cannot do anything. They, they have to retake again, but as we are not able to do the, the transfer, right? So they have to be, so have to be very careful in terms of uh, monitoring and auditing of the market credentials when we deliver, okay? Especially for accredited programs. Okay, so we, are, we have actually gone ahead of uh, in terms of NQ because they never mentioned about exam moderation or that in the in the GDP. But we actually done that now. We're doing exam mod we're doing moderation um, uh, of the assessment, uh, even uh, the exam results. We're also doing moderation. So it's very similar to the academic program because we want to make sure that later when NQ comes into audit, uh, we we are okay. We are okay, right? So even uh -huh. uh, even the standalone one, the Prokari, we, we have, we have um, the reason, uh, I think briefing by NQA. Even for standalone, they're going to have set up this this quality QBC. Uh, yeah, QBC as well. Quality verification center. Yeah, quality verification for standalone. Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of a lot of operational questions. Yeah, um, is related to the micro credential from. 
accredited academic program. And I, I think, um, understandably, it, it's a real concern because um, when we develop the micro-credential version of the academic program, we want to ensure that it doesn't compromise any any part of the compliance. You know, we do we no compromise on the quality, no compromise on the assessment, and and so on. Uh, it doesn't to be it doesn't have to be I think exactly as how we conduct the face to face version of the program. I think most importantly, I think we have to provide evidence uh, that uh, the learning outcome uh, has been achieved. There's no compromise in terms of uh, the learning outcome or the whole program outcome. Uh, the, the, the assessment, the, the details of how we do the assessment for the micro-credential uh, in terms of yeah, the, the, the delivery part and so on, um, it, it's not much different from the ODL program. You know, for each module, actually, we design it. We can use a format of uh, the same format, self-instructional uh, material format, to design the module. But we deliver it online, uh, yeah. mainly. For hybrid program, of course, some of the uh, set of module can be delivered face to face. It, it depends on the nature of the program. So I think uh, the bottom line is, um, when you think about all this operational aspect. Just, just remember that we must make sure that the learning outcome can be achieved. We cannot compromise in terms of the learning outcome. Whatever we do in terms of the detail, learning activities, assessment, assignment, and whatnot, as long as it can achieve the learning outcome, that's it. And the other thing, and like the SLT and so on, those are the, the things that we need to, to fulfill. We cannot compromise. If the SLT is 40, uh, you know, 40 hours, we can we must show that the SLT is met for 40 hours. I think uh, to me, well, easier said than done, but of course, in terms of when you go down and on the ground and, and design it, of course. Uh, so I think what I what I was saying just now, address a question from here, from Geometrica here, uh, from uh, Chia. Ng Chia Yi here. Uh, for example, I, I read the questions yeah, from Geomat Geomatica. As for design of the MC course, taking from accredited program, how much can we deviate, diversify while maintaining the accredited recognition? So again, <laughs> it's, it's not a matter of how much can you deviate. It's a matter of whether you know, the learning outcome can be achieved. Right. As what you have put in, for, uh, you have uh, spelled out for the face to face program. But the variation in the details of how you deliver in terms of assessment activities, of course, uh, that can, I, I think there's some room there for you to maneuver. Yeah. yeah. So, so, would you yeah, agree yeah, with that, yeah. Dr. Tenko? Yeah, the assessment doesn't have to be exactly the same as the, yeah. uh, the original, but the main thing is, as you said, it's not has to be met. And mm -hmm. the lecturer doesn't have to be the lecturers on universities. For example, we have. Mm -hmm. In Penang, we actually have people for industry to be the lecturers. Mm. Uh, so, but as long as they follow, but they need to follow the our the, our course information, the micro yeah. information uh, uh, work, uh, template. No, they, yeah. they have to closely follow. And of course, uh, we, have to, we have to we have to guide we have to guide them. Yeah. yeah. So that answer the question by Chia Yi here, Ng Chia Yi, for for accredited MC, should we should the modules must follow the closely the MQA approved module and taught by qualified lecturers and not industry trainers or collaborators. So regardless of who developed the module, he must uh, comply to or follow uh, our guideline so that uh, it, it doesn't, uh, uh, it? Uh, it, it will kind of uh, meet all the requirement for the learning outcomes, student learning time, engagement, and so on. Yeah. All right. Then. Um, I want to go back to yeah. actually the sharing in terms of the deployment part uh, and less so on the policy perhaps because um, you know one of the things that I have also heard from my own university and from others is the, the idea that people think 
MC micro credential is just moving from this in person to this virtual platform, which which is not so, and they get very perhaps overwhelmed with the amount of work that actually has to be done, you know, to move from the course that they have been teaching for 10 to 15 years, you know, uh, into this micro credential modules, right? And suddenly having to really go into all these details. So how do you, what, do, what would you tell them? What would you advise them in terms of, you know, um, how to prepare themselves or how would you tell us at the university management level, you know, how would you prepare these people? I know you said a lot of hand holding. What are the things that, beside the things that you have mentioned that you actually have to hand hold them? Um, the management has to recognize the contributions of the staff who have actually, you know, to be involved in market niche development department, it needs a lot of um, passion. One, they have to be, they really, they really want to do this. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they have, it, it takes a lot of that time, actually, you know. Uh, and uh, so there has to be, the management has to recognize in terms of, I don't know, by giving them rewards. It may not be monetary reward, but it could be in other ways like promotion or part of KPI. I don't know, but there has to be some recognition of this uh, uh, and uh, of this stuff. And it has taken for us in MMU to convince the management, you know, <laughs> this is something we have to give uh, recognition. They're, they're doing something, they are contributing to the university, you know, and, and it's a very, very important is you have to buy in a management first. Very, very important. Uh, can I add to that? Uh, you know, um, you know. Remember when uh, doing micro credential is actually a huge undertaking, huge undertaking. So we cannot blame our people if they feel if they show resistance. You know, in the beginning. Uh, recently, I share one quote uh, in my Facebook. Uh, this quote from Rick Godwin. Yeah? I want to read this. One reason people resist change or resist doing something new, is that they focus on what they have to give up instead of what they have to gain. So, of course, uh, the learning curve for some people when they start to embark on, on doing micro-credential, if they have experience doing online, doing MOOC and so on, so for them, the learning curve probably would not be that steep. But for those who have not done anything on online or not done much, have not developed any MOOC, have not followed any online course or completed any MOOC. When they start doing micro-credential, of course, there is something very new for them. But they are the subject matter expert. But they are not expert in the technical part, in the technology part. So, of course, we must understand and empathize with them. You know, therefore, they need uh, hand holding. They need to see what's in it for us, maybe. Is human being things, you know, we must understand uh, maybe some form of incentive, facilitate as much as we can. And we, over the past three, four years, especially in the past two years, I think um, one of the things that I do most of the time is as a motivator, to motivate, to inspire. So I spend a lot of my time in various WhatsApp group, different, different micro-credential team has a micro, has their own WhatsApp group. So I am in every, the, every one of the group. So I have to play and take time to really inspire them, motivate them because we want to get them moving. So you have to nudge them, you have to push them sometimes. But um, those are the things I think we have to understand. That's why when we look at the effective management aspect that uh, the, whole, the whole theme of this session this morning, uh, <clears throat> We talk about learner's experience. We must also talk about the, 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 the cost developers or the subject matters uh, experience there, uh, which is very, very important. It's not, it's not to be underestimated. Which means that we will have to yeah. invite you again for another sharing session. <laughs> I think they know probably fun can. <laughs> Looking at the developers' experience now, and yeah. also perhaps uh, the again the you know the accreditation part, which would 
uh, I believe it's better suited uh, if we have somebody from MQA who is in charge. Dr. Lian, 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 can I add on? Sure. Uh, in memory, we started with a faculty that actually has experience in uh, ODL. So they, 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 for example, we started with faculty management. The most of the lecturers actually have experience in ODL, open and distance learning, and uh, so they were easier to read. So they're basically like our pilot uh, project. And then when they started to be successful in selling their market and now we see the other faculties now coming to us and say, I want to develop market and So, so uh, for example, the uh, strangely, my faculty, they were quite, they were not easy to convince, but now they want to do it, you know? Uh, because they felt it's, it's so difficult to teach multimedia online and all that, but now they see that you know, FMI has start, they started and they're quite successful now, and now they want to jump onto the bandwagon as well. So start off with uh, in a faculty that is uh, has, has some experience, mm. and of course, I think very important in, in our case when we appointed the uh, faculty MC champions who were there to uh, motivate, we had the, the champions to motivate the other staff uh, to assist other staff also that also helped a lot a lot okay all right i i know uh we have a lot of questions because this is only the beginning so there's a lot of um there's a lot of things for the training unit to be doing shall i have prof friends and miss low so but we are out of time i think um so i thank the panelists and i have to move I, and i'm I'm uh, <laughs> handing this over to the MC. Thank you so much. I have learned a lot from the two of you, and I believe everyone. Baru nak panas ni. Okay, over to you, Dr. Nizam. A lot of interesting questions there. Yeah, apparently we have a lot of questions, but we are running out of time, Prof. Yeah, um, yeah I think um, the training unit will, will have another uh, special session on this very topic, probably later. Yeah, Mr. Do. So because apparently uh, there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to ask, and there's a lot to understand. And that includes myself. I, I thank you uh, very much, Associate Professor Dr. Lihana Burhan for moderating the session. And thank you, Kyushu, thank you to Prof. Karim and Dr. Tengku for their great, great selling session. And we'd like to thank all the participants for your kind attention and active participation. But before we leave, I have to make this one uh, announcement that um, Maika and also Uta are co-organizing a seminar Probably uh, Mr. will share the, the pamphlet later with the audience, with the participants. Um, it is called SICA, it's actually an annual seminar organized by MICAN. And uh, this year it is co-organized by uh, UTA. So we'd like to thank everyone on behalf of training unit MICAN, your ITM and also UTA. We would like to apologize for any shortcomings, especially that we don't have much time uh, to answer and address all the concerns. And see you again in the next uh, event, inshallah. But probably if we have questions uh, in details, you can probably email all the speakers. If it is okay with you, Prof. Karim and Dr. Tengku, right? Yeah, yeah they, can, they can email you also um, if they have... Yeah, sure. Um, okay. Yeah, they have uh, further concerns and questions. Or they can invite you uh, over for this kind of webinar to their respective universities. I think that will be better. Okay, uh, I think that's all for now. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'm Sharon mm -hmm. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Bye bye. Do we have a photo session? No, we, we did it already uh, earlier. Okay, okay. Oh, for last part of right, Thank you. You missed that. <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, no, I thought there are more, a lot more people coming and join us during oh. the session. So, and, and that's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank, thank you, Dr. Tengku. Thank you, Dr. Liana. Thanks, MC. Nizam. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Salam, salam.